It is Monday, folks. I hope you guys had a great weekend. It's time for another set of videos. So we're going to have videos this week. Uh, if everything goes right, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, we're filming this a little early since Vicki and I are going to be out of town, but we've already kind of talked about that, and we'll talk about it more as the week goes through. So here's what we're going to do today. Vicki's got a new project. She's making some cutting boards, and I'm going to do some carving in them. But before I get into the layout and the carving, I want to talk a little bit about, you guys are going to see a video on Wednesday where I talk about the SC50 as compared to the profile bit and some of the miscommunication that there's been and some of the um, people are using kind of the wrong bit at the wrong time. So let me, uh, babe, if you want to come down here, I want to show you something. So. What you'll see on Friday is you're going to, oh, these are going to be what the boards are laid out with. We'll get into that in a minute. So what I have here is two bits. They are exactly the same bit. They are SC50s. Now, if you look really close, you'll see this one is shorter than this one. It's because this has been ground down probably three or four times at least. I don't know. I don't really keep track, but I know it's been ground down now. It's not only shorter, but it also cuts a fatter line. You'll notice that this is a much blunter line than this is. Um, or a blunter, uh, not line, but uh, flute. It it's actually cuts a wider groove. This one, when you see the video on Friday, or on, excuse me, on Wednesday, I talk about the fact that... Um, if you carve too deep with the SC50, you could lose that tip, and that's absolutely true. But once you grind it down a few times, or when I grind it down a few times, it becomes uh, much more solid, so I'm not as apt to lose that tip. So even though the SC50 is really fragile at the beginning when it's brand new like this one is, after you've ground it and sharpened it a few times, it, it cuts a little bit wider line. The reason I'm going through all this is because um, I'm going to cut these with my SC50, but I'm going to use my fatter SC50 that cuts a little bit wider line. Uh, because some of these little spots are really thin, I don't need to use the brand new SC50. I'm going to use this. I think this one will work just fine. But y you have to understand that there's always... Um, always exceptions so just understand that once your SC50 has been ground down a few times it'll cut a wider line but still not, it'll still cut thinner than what the uh, the profile bit does so anyway that I wanted to kind of go through that and so keep that in mind when you watch um, when you watch Wednesday's video because I go over a lot and I do a demo with both the profile and the SC50 but that video was all based on a brand new SC50 not one that's been ground down two or three times so now that you're totally confused um, we're gonna come back and we'll get these laid out and we'll start carving some of these oh I didn't even mention what these are these are cutting boards. Vicky's doing some cutting boards. And these are cherry, I think you said, right? These are cherry. So she's got them all prepped. And uh, we're going to come back and, and personalize them with, uh, these are for your sisters, right? Yeah. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Okay. So we're just going to hit this with some black. Give us a line to go by. These are little stencils that Vicky made. Turned out really well. So... Um, we're going to do this one and then we're going to do Leslie's Kitchen. We'll do that off camera. So uh, one thing I did want to mention on here, when you guys saw me, these were the cutting boards that Vicki, um, that you guys saw on a video uh, a few days ago, where uh, but they had bark on them. Vicki has decided that she liked the look of them just clean edged without the bark on them. So, uh, you know, all the resin that she did on the edge was kind of for not because she liked the looks of the clean edge better. So anyway, that's a cool thing. You can change your mind in the middle and it worked out. So we'll come back and uh, we'll get to carving on this. Mag's on camera. Look at you, you're Mag. the star, Mag. You are the star. Oh, now he got shy. <laughs> Slobbering all over me. Hey, Mag. Say hi. 
Say hi. Say hi. Say hi. All right. I got to go to work, buddy. I got to go to work. All right. So here's what we got. Uh, these letters, by the way, I didn't I didn't talk about that before. How tall are these letters? They're about a half inch tall, looks like, um, on the lower case, and the upper case are about uh, a little less than an inch, about seven eighths, it looks like, something like that. Anyway, so we're going to use this SE50. I think I've got it set at about the right depth, but I may have to adjust it as we go. So let's get after it. Here we go. Okay, I want to talk about this a little bit. On this particular one, you'll notice that the, the middle of the G, the middle of the S uh, are gone. Uh, when Vicky was cutting them, they just, uh, those things just kind of disappeared. But if you, you don't necessarily need that because you can see as I went around that out, the, other, the outside line there, it just automatically just left the middle and I'll do the same thing on the S. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is here at this tail on the A, um, you can see that I had my router up and I just kind of brought it down. I, I wanted to leave that kind of a sharp point there. So I kind of started here. If you go back and watch, I started here and as I went further, I gradually went a little bit, bit deeper. I'm going to do the same thing on the S here. So I did the same kind of thing here on the tail on the K and in here a little bit. Anytime I've got a real kind of a, a sharp point like that, I like to kind of lift the router out with that point and give it, uh, give it kind of a, a sharp point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the rest of these up off camera and then we'll come back. Okay, that's all carved. Now, I probably went a little bit deeper than I really needed to, but um, I'm, do I'm done as far as carving on this one. I'll carve the other ones off camera, but uh, Vicki actually is going to take it from here. She's going to do the sanding, and then uh, she's going to do something special with this. But I wanted to talk about, uh, this is the first time I've carved cherry, and i got to say, it carved um, really hard. Of course, I was cutting with an SC50, and I've only got one flute on that SC50, but it, it wasn't chippy. It threw a really good chip. Uh, it smells amazing. It smells really nice. Um, but it, it definitely, um, it would have been nice to have, to be able to use the, um, 
It would have been nice to be able to have a separate flute like using the, the profile bit on there. But all in all, it carved really well. Um, so I, And I know there's some guys on the Facebook groups and other people that use Cherry on a regular basis. But this is the first time, so this is almost like a, another review of a different kind of wood. But this Cherry, I think that's the first time I've ever carved it. Super solid, not grainy at all. Solid as a rock, kind of. That, that's a good analogy, actually. It was it carved very hard, but very consistent. Um, I think with a profile bit, it would cut, or the 60 or the 90 would cut a lot better. So uh, that is it. I'm done on my part. The next thing you'll see is Vicki uh, doing her deal on here. So we'll be right back. Okay, hi everybody. It's my turn to do my thing. Um, Eric did the carving on the board and I did a little more sanding. Um, so here's the carving, turned out beautiful, as usual, no doubt. Um, and I'm glad he did it uh, as a deeper cut because I'm going to fill this with resin. Um, not the whole board, just the letters are going to stand out. My sister, this Julia is my sister, and she has all her kitchen is all done in grapes, like wine glasses and grapes. So I thought purple, perfect for her. And then Eric did something for me, because if you set this down, it is going to be on little uh, rubber, little foot feet things, but I still wanted to make sure that it was able to be lifted up without trying to shove your fingers underneath it. So Eric cut this back here at like a 45 degree angle, and then we beveled the front. He beveled the front. I don't bevel. Um, and then I sanded it down so that it looks... I, I took the bark off because it just looked too bulky for me. I thought in a kitchen it should be more of a clean look. So what you're going to see now is resin. So I've made the purple resin. And if you just breathe on it, it takes out the bubbles. I so missed you don't that. I was down too low. Do that again. <laughs> no, I'm not Come on, do it again. All right, there you go. So see, but it takes all the bubbles out of it. <laughs> So yes, I'm going to do this purple resin. I love the purple and purple resin. Purple Vikings purple. Woohoo! And I see a chunk of stuff there, so we'll take so that. I'm gonna zoom right in on them little letters. All right. So I use the Dixie cup because you can crunch it, and I want to crunch it so that you, it gets down in there and pour it slowly. This kind of comes into that whole patience thing that I'm not real good at. So now, what about, um, I'm sure there's somebody that's going to ask about resin uh, on something that's going to have food. Right. I I was worried about that, the food safety thing. Um, and I've seen several videos where people say, you know, that it's uh, food safe. So I had to, I contacted art resin by email and they sent me an email that says it is food safe um, that and then they sent they sent me a whole bunch of stuff um, FD the FDA report that they got because because this resin doesn't have the um, VOCs VOCs there you go those things that other the smelly resin, stuff the what the smelly stuff the smelly stuff that other resins have, it is food safe. So I do have um, an email from them that states that it's food safe. If anybody wants to know or see any of that, you can contact me. I'll forward you that email um, with all the reports from the FDA and stuff. So. And for those that, that may not know the brand of resin that you're using? The resin that I'm using that I always use because I love it is Art resin it's on our on our Amazon we have a link to it in the Amazon store um, it's art resin a-r-t-r-e-s-i-n just like it sounds wow. so what's the plan here when this stuff dries so when this dries we're going to try not to make a huge mess so once too this, late <laughs> <laughs> so once this dries um, I'm going to sand it all down again and then um, it's got a lot of sanding that needs to be done. I've just kind of done my cleanup sand. I haven't really done any of the uh, finished sand. 
So I'm going to do sanding. I'm going to use the, I think I used the 40 grit just to kind of shape it to what I wanted. Then I'm going to use um, probably go to 80, 120, 200, 400, up to 1,000 if I need to. So once I get a good finished sand on it, I'm going to use the Howard's um, uh, butcher block oil. Howard's, what is that? It's a, yeah, Howard's butcher block oil. And I'm going to put the oil on it, I don't know, probably three or four times, rub it in, let it set, and then I'll clean, wipe that off, kind of buff it. And then I will use the conditioner, the butcher block conditioner, which has beeswax in it. And just like I did on the polenta table. And I'm gonna poke this in here, make sure it goes down all the way. I wanna make sure all those little grooves are full. And there's no trapped air bubbles Right, there. see like there, it was a big trapped air bubble. Yeah, see, that makes sense. Good thinking. And then I'll, I'll use the heat gun to get the bubbles out. Because it does, it is creating some bubbles. So I'm doing, I'm going to make one of these for each of my sisters. And then for my girls. Don't tell the girls. It's a secret. Christmas presents, remember? And then... I might even make me one. So. And again, this is cherry, right? Cherry wood. This is, yeah, this is cherry. And it is hard. I know Eric it's said very it was solid, really yeah. solid when he, when he yeah. carved it. So I'm going to. That's going to look really cool. That's going to look nice. Gosh, you sure you made enough? <laughs> well, I wasn't sure <laughs> if it was going to soak into the wood. I might do the girls in purple. I think that. I don't know. That's right. a lot. Look how much I have left over. Yeah. Waste not, want not. You know. gotta find something to pour. <laughs> the I'll give me one of my little, uh, Your little molds. molds. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. And again, All after right. I'm done with this, back out then. I am going to sand it off real good, get my finishing sand, do all of that. And then I will do the, um, the conditioner and the oil, just to kind of protect it, make, make sure that it's set for cutting. And then we'll put the little rubber beets on it. So right. anyway, that's about it until I get the sanding done and this dries and then I sand. And um, I think that's it. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we are back. And last night or yesterday afternoon, I poured the purple resin on the cutting board i put you can see here i i think that's really going to come out nice i'm excited to see it so what i'm going to do now it's really it, a light kind of a, almost like a it's not super dark but that's on this inside it's darker yeah, so i think it's gonna look cool. yeah so right now i'm going to sand this down with a 40 grit um paper here with my little orbital and then we'll see what it looks like so here we go It's very scratch right now. Okay, so there we go. I think that's going to look really good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I've got a bunch of that sanding to do to do my finished sand on it, and then we'll come back and we'll finish it with the um, finishing oil and finishing conditioner. So we will be right back. Okay, you're on. Here oh. We go. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> payback. Okay, so um, I got my board all sanded down to my finished sand. I've got it sanded down to about a um, 800, I think 800 grit was the, the last one I used. I went from a 40 to a 
to an 80, to a 120, to a 240, blah, 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 all the way up, whatever it was. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, this is what I used on the um, polenta board that I used. Oh, and, hang on. That Sorry. I made. It's the Howard's Butcher Block Conditioner. Um, this has um, beeswax and conditioning oil. So it's made from mineral oil, stabilized with vitamin E, beeswax, and carnauba wax. So this worked really well on uh, my brother-in-law's polenta board. Hello. <laughs> it shot across it the road. It did. Sorry Maybe about that. Yeah, a little pressure inside. Yeah, from I had to the sun. set it. It says to set, get it, use it warm. That way, the oil and the wax kind of mix and blend, shake it up. So here we go. Let's do it. This is the fun part. Watching the grain come along. Yeah. So what you do is when you use this, uh, it probably could be a little bit warmer even. You gotta rub this in really good and then let it set for a few minutes and then reapply it and then let it set for about 20 minutes and then, look at that, oh my gosh. And then you buff it off. And then um, throughout this little board's life, it will be need to be retreated just to keep it um, pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so, Anyway, I'm going to do this real quick. I'll go back over it again. I want to put some really good in there. There we go. Nice. I know I use probably more than the average person, but nobody ever said I was normal. So, this is the side I'm really anxious to put it on, and I'll put it here so you can zoom on it. Well, my board's not, my table's not level, but that's all right. I probably use way, really doesn't need way, to be way more in this need. sense um, like it does when you're pouring resin. No, so. look at that purple. You see it? Wow, that is a beautiful grain. So this I'll put it on, gosh, probably three or four times at least, and then, gosh darn it. And then send instructions with my sister. This is the other sister. The polenta board belonged to my brother-in-law from my little sister. This is my big sister. She's 11 months older than me. And I was thinking, her name is Julia, but all her life we have called her Yaya. So I should have put Yaya's kitchen. But coulda, shoulda, woulda. So... There you have it. And again, I will put, gosh, I don't know, three, four, or five coats on this. Yeah. Let it so set. So go ahead and, yeah, let me. Let it set and then buff it in between uh, coats. And that first coat I use more because that really soaks in. The second, third, fourth coats, you don't have to use near as much. But anyway, so that's it. Now I, I have. I hope the camera does it justice. Now I, man, that's gorgeous. Now I have three more to make. <laughs> so um, this is a great idea, and actually, it was fairly. It's pretty inexpensive for Christmas gifts. Um, I think the board. I think I only paid like fifty-five dollars for the board down here from a local guy. Split it up into four pieces. Um, biggest part of it was actually, you know, sanding and stuff like that, but. That's pretty fun, I have to admit. I and, enjoy and that. You, you did some research, and they said that a lot of cutting boards are made out of this cherry. Yes, it's got to be a hard board, and I saw many of them that were cherry. That's why I got the cherry. Actually, I wanted walnut, but I'm really glad I got the cherry. That's um, gorgeous. So, anyway, guys, I hope you like this. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a send me an email. I was going to say give me a call. You can call there, too. Um, but send me an email. Uh, like I said, I have that email that Art Resin sent me about the uh, um, food safety FDA thing. food safety uh, things that they have. So if you want that, uh, let me know and I'll forward you that email. And I think that's it. I hope you like it. Give so us a thumbs what, up. What's your email in case they don't have My it? email is vicky with davesigns at gmail.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-W-I-T-H-D-A-V-E-S-I-G-N-S at gmail.com. So, if you have any other questions, email eric at eric at 
um, any questions about anything, just let us know. Please don't leave the face. Eric doesn't look at Facebook for questions and pictures and stuff. So don't send them through Facebook. Send them through his email. That's the best way. He checks his email 500 times a day. Do you want to remind him about um, uh, shipping on Thursday? Yes. Thursday. Let's see. What day? What, that's It'd be the 4th. The 4th through the 6th. Eight, I believe there will we will not be shipping Eric and I have to go to California um, had a, my cousin passed away and my mom is not well but all is good so we're all in God's hands so um, anyway so no mail will be going out Thursday through Monday of course Monday's a holiday Sunday's not a mail day so um, I that's it uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic week um, and we're out bye bye